Okay, okay, okay. I'm Annalise and welcome to part four. It is the final part of Jay's chat for ANTM Cycle 18 with Sophie Sumner. Now, covering Jay's chat has been a massive undertaking. It's been super eye-opening, not only because I'm hearing all of this ANTM gossip for the first time, but also because it's showing me how much you guys support me and how much you love the content that I'm making. Thank you so much for that. Please do spread the word. You can subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Give this video a thumbs up, click the bell notification, and follow me on Instagram. Since this is the finale of Jay's chat, I have gone formal in my favourite Zara suit. Yes. Let me know if you like it in the comments below. Parts one, two and three are where all the major ANTM revelations happen. So if you haven't taken a look at those first, I suggest you do. Um, for me, part four is more about attempting to tie it all in a pretty little bow. Sophie and Jay talk about the experiences of winning Toronto Fashion Week and the ANTM prizes. Forget the teacup, I got the whole damn pot. So we are kicking off talking about the final runway show with Forever 21. Dean Lazengui, I hope I pronounced your name properly. I'm so sorry if I mispronounced it, but um, it's, it's G-E-N-E-L-A-Z-E-G-U-I. But said going from Roberto Cavalli, Versace, Vivian Westwood, etc. What did Forever 21, the, run, the finale runway feel like? a slap in your face for both of you guys, or were you guys just on a tight budget this season? Actually, I'll let you give your opinion on the runway, but I'll tell you guys, it actually was the opposite. Yes, the, but the show was on a tight budget, but to get to Macau, the tourism board, they paid for all the flights and all I'm of that. I'm sure they did. And MGM Grand paid a lot for all that MGM Grand. Did you fly Grand. first class? Well, I, we, always flew, we always flew first class oh. for the show, but someone else paid for it. And then, uh, and then Forever 21 paid a fortune to do that runway show. Whereas the Roberto Cavallis, et cetera, of the world, they didn't pay for placement. We needed Roberto Cavalli. We needed Versace. We were so happy when we did that couture, you know, show in, um, you know, remember the, when we did the couture dresses in Italy? Um, yeah, but Forever 21 paid for that placement. And I, this was the runway, again, I had nothing to do with it. I was just told what it was gonna be. I thought it was gonna be like those cool holographic things that you see, like the presentations that Beyonce does. And yes, you guys did the cool thing with the samurai swords and all of that, yeah. but the walking with just the shadow outline was kind of dull. What did you think? Do you know what? I'm being deadly serious. I was so, this is gonna sound ungrateful, it's not meant to. I was so broken at this point. I was- You just didn't even care. I couldn't have given, we, I loved Laura and we were really close on that at the end because we were like, mm. you have to, she was the only person that got it at that point, you know, and Lisa mm -hmm. as well. The final runway show was super fun for me. Obviously all the pressure had evaporated after being eliminated. So it meant that I could just relax. I was obviously super proud of how far I'd made it. But it's true, it was a little bit of a boring runway show. I didn't really understand the walking sideways in the shadows or not in the shadows. Like, could you even see the clothes? It felt like this whole runway show was about everything else apart from the clothes, which does not a fashion show make. I actually liked Forever 21 at the time. I know Kanye was trying to diss it with, you know, Rock Forever 21 and Just Turn 30. That was so me. But going back to Jay's point about how much money Forever 21 paid for that placement, I could only imagine it was a fortune. And it's kind of like the modeling industry. So the commercial brands is where the money is really at. In terms of the fee that you get paid to walk in these high fashion shows or do these high fashion shoots, it's pretty rubbish. Of course, unless you're a supermodel. But for me, the kind of model that I am, commercial is how I pay my bills. I did a video, how much money can you actually make as a model? Um, take a look at that, I'll pop the link above. And do you remember the cover girl? She had like a breakdown. Of course I remember, I remember it because oh, I yeah. felt- yeah, Laura um, had a full on panic attack. At first I thought there was something medically wrong with her, like, like in terms of like low blood sugar, whatever, but panic attacks are absolutely real. 
Um, and you know what? You've been talking about this whole live, the pressure cooker of that production, not just only the competition. You know, I felt so much empathy for her. You know, on camera, they show, you know, myself and, you know, Jed, the photographer, walking to a van. That was very real. That was not research. We we're like, let's get her to the hospital. Laura Fused, which was one of um, the, you know, executive producers now on the show, who's a lovely woman. Um, she was just like, we got to get her somewhere. We got to get her. And and really, it was Laura, um, the the producer, that said, we've got to get, you know, um, that that read from her at some point. That's why when I came back to your suite afterwards, I'm um, like a, a day later when she was feeling better and actually did her line reads. Remember? Yeah. Um, we we wanted her to have a real opportunity and a real shot at winning, because um, we didn't get anything that day. Somebody just said something about Simone eating the haggis. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, yes. Oh, God. <laughs> yes, Ugh. She wouldn't share it. And like, yes, just watching it. I mean, that is literally what you saw on camera. She just chammed down a whole haggis. <laughs> yeah, which was like... Um, anyway, sorry. But um, also, but um, you were going to talk about, we have more questions, but I do want to get to your experience of winning. So Final Runway, yes. Oh, the we Final all Runway. Realized Final Runway was about money and product placement. Forever 21 Interesting. was the placement and they paid a lot of money for it. And if you imagine what you saw on air was edited mm. and it looked boring, let me tell you the actual runway show for the audience watching, it was the most dull thing I've ever seen. And not because I had produced other the other runway shows for the for the show, it just was like who who sanctioned this idea? It was so dull. And before we even get into the win, a bunch of people have written there about go sees down below. And and I will say this, oh, yeah, I was great back in Toronto. So I I'm going to talk about some really interesting experiences around that. When they first of all, when I agreed because we knew when they set the time of the cycle, you know, I had my. Um, clothing line in Canada called Attitude J Manual. And I knew I had to present at Fashion Week. And so it was always carved out that I was gonna leave LA and go to Fashion Week and come back. I had to because of my contract. And I was showing, it was like it was IMG and Mercedes Benz. It was a huge, just like New York Fashion Week. Um, and, it, and you were at my show, you were in my show. It's a huge show, just like New York Fashion Week. And um, when they told me, oh, we're gonna, we've decided since you've got to go to Toronto, we're going to do go sees with Toronto Fashion Week, and it was tied in with IMG, which used to be a part of America's Next Top Model. I was like, really? And you're going to feature my clothing line? Or like, is Tyro okay with that? And I was basically told by a producer, we approached her very carefully. Um, she's agreed because it's many different designers. We'll just say this, just like, just do your thing and just not talk about it when you're on set or speak to her about it. So wow. I just never, I never spoke to her about it, but I was really grateful though that they allowed, because it was a great go see, because it was the first time girls got to actually go see with like Pink Tartan. You were the only one who walked in the Pink Tartan show. You guys got to meet real designers and be in a real fashion week, which mm. was cool. That was cool, because I remember there being loads of other models around. So it was the first time we got to like break reality a little bit and actually be yes. outside of this bubble, which was quite nice. Yeah, Toronto Fashion Week was probably one of my favourite challenges just because it kind of felt like production couldn't meddle and get involved because this was real designers who had a real runway show to cast for, which meant we kind of were all on the same level playing field. Now, I obviously cover this episode of ANTM. Um, I go into more detail, so I guess that's just more binge watching for you. So I don't know about the other people when they won their prizes if they actually yeah. got them. I got some of mine, I didn't get some others, which I'll tell you about, but- What did, did you get? What did I, you I get? I did win the trip back to Calgary. I really went to the Calgary Stampede. Oh, they wow, really okay, cool. They really paid for everything. Yeah, I, I think I took my ex-boyfriend, whoever it was at the time. Ebony didn't go, I don't know why, some kind of conflict mm. or something, but out of my prizes, I didn't get them all. Oh, tell us oh, then. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> Mystery, do you care to share? Yeah, I am really interested in this part. I want to know what she didn't get. Because let's face it, the prize list for this season of ANTM was super extensive. Let me try and remind you, 
I've actually got it written down. So, um, a contract with LA models and New York models. Now, I tried to find Sophie on their website and I couldn't see her, but that doesn't mean that she wasn't signed with them straight after the show. Um, the shoot with Vogue Italia, we saw that, so I know she got that. Also, the face of the dream come true fragrance, along with a song released by CBS, um, the cover girl campaign, and a guest host for Extra. Now, that is the prize that I really wanted. Was there anything else? Anyway, this Jay's chat has got so much ANTMT that Sophie kind of starts to lose her trail of thought. So we end up back talking about the final judging, but she does answer her prizes question at the end. G and T? Fun judging. So we go in and I remember they were like, you need to do your last photo shoot with Tyra. And I just started crying. And I was like, I can't do another bloody photo shoot. Like I was exhausted. I was completely emotionally drained. I was physically drained. My friend the night before just had a panic attack and been sent to hospital. Like that's a real friendship and a real emotion. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. not that it's about me, but it's just like, it's another thing labeled on, which was just another heap mm -hmm. of like shit to deal with. And so you like, did your shoot before, do you guys both shoot with her beforehand? We both or you mean shot after with her the before. Judging? And yeah. it must have been, we were all in our gowns and I was like, so you was, both do a quote unquote winner shoot with her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And and again, it was very like, you just go in, she stands there, you take a few and out. But I, re I remember I really didn't want to do it because I was just, it felt, it, I, I was in such a weird headspace that I felt like it was another competition. Like I was going to be judged on this as well. And I was just done with being judged. Like you really couldn't win, right? You have production choosing your photo. And then you've got people criticizing a photo that you don't think is very good. Like, it's so, like, how do you, and, and you know, and- It's and, a television and then, show. And mm -hmm. of course, and like, we, we did the Macau Tower and that one up in, in the Heights was hand mm. on heart to this day, the scariest thing I've ever done in my life. Like Absolutely. I went back to that hotel and slept for as long as I could until the next photo shoot because I was shaking and traumatic. And I heard that producers were told by the people at the Macau Tower that it wasn't safe to open it to the public and they didn't think we should do this shoot. I don't know if that was Because of the rain, because of the rain and the wind. Because it was so Absolutely. rainy and slippy yeah. and, and windy. windy yeah. Yep, that is defo true. We were fearing for our lives out here. Now, I haven't done a recap on this episode of ANTM, um, but I've got a lot to say. So, hair and makeup turned up to our MGM suite at stupid o'clock in the morning. Um, by the time the sun came up, it was actually still dark outside because of the crazy weather. And then, by the time we arrived actually at the Macau Tower, yeah, my hair was a write-off. My hair needed to be redone. A lot of our makeup needed to be redone because the weather was stupid extreme. Like, I'm not just saying any old weather. This was like top-notch hail and gale force winds, people. The tower was shut to the public. Not because of our little photo shoot, but because it was too dangerous, yes. I don't know if you remember my photo from that shoot, but I had a nice wide stance. My legs were nice and wide because I thought that would help with the base. Nope, I was still being pushed to slid along that platform from the wind. Hail was poking you in the eyeball, left, right and centre. And you see the nostrils? Yeah, that wasn't me flaring, that was the wind. But yeah, super dangerous. I don't know where health and safety was at. I remember you and Nigel were absolute saints that day and that's when real people come through. Like really, mm -hmm. you both sat with me and like gave me a hug afterwards. Like that was really needed because that was a mm -hmm. real fear of like, mm -hmm. you know, I think mm -hmm. you kind of take it for granted and you get judged and they're like, well, I've had to do things in my judging mm -hmm. day. And I was like, okay, maybe if somebody offered me a lot of money, I'd probably do it. But more or less, like that is not something I would do day to day. And tell us your experience of how it happens and how it ends. So you, so we went in, we did the final photo shoot. We then go into, Tyra asked me something like why I should win top model, right? And I just, I froze. I completely froze. I couldn't think of anything. My confidence level was down here. My, like, I, I don't know what happened. I, I just stood there and I couldn't think of one thing to say. And Laura had just given her spiel and it was really good. And it was from the heart, I deserve this. And I think I ended up just being like, I just, I just want to win or something. It was ridiculous. And later on, producers had told me that I almost didn't win because of that, like, because I couldn't- Because of that answer. Because of that answer. Mm -hmm. I couldn't like mm -hmm. say why I wanted to win because I was just mm -hmm. so gone at that point. So you, so we came back on, I remember I, hand on heart, I, I was like, I'm, I haven't got this. After that, and like the judges were looking at me like, were you in that? I can't remember if you were there. 
Of course, yeah. No, I'm. Oh, I'm in the final judging. You're in yeah, the final judging. Yeah, sorry, I haven't yeah. quite got to it. I'm literally on the last episode. I was watching. Yes, that. I'm yeah. sitting right there. Yeah. So you're there, and like, and I remember just, um, and, and all you guys were all looking at me as if to be like, you really can't, like, shit. You just need to say one thing, girl. Um. So then we leave, and I remember I said to Laura, I, was, I, I was like, you've got this, and I think maybe she might have thought as well because I really screwed it up, and um, and I don't think they ever aired it. I don't think they aired that bit. But she was like, you've got this, you've got this. So when, so my reaction when I won was pure like what on earth i also didn't realize that you won money i thought they said you win a contract worth this much so i was like kelly was like what are you going to do with the money and i was like what money and they were like you win the hundred thousand dollars which you kind of do you get taxed on it and it takes a while <laughs> so you don't quite win a hundred thousand but like yes you know. and i remember well, anything like, in this country you get taxed on you get yeah, yeah yeah um so this is what happens. You win, right? You're like, oh my God, amazing. Two cameras go off. You look around. The set is coming down. The set Literally. is being taken down. Everyone's Literally. gone. I think like you guys gave me a hug. Everyone is just gone. It is quiet. Your handler takes you back to a hotel room. I wasn't allowed to talk to Laura. Oh no, sorry. Before that, as soon as I win, the producer comes with a huge contract about this thick and puts it down it's like you can't tell anyone sign this contract mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. you sign a contract and you're like you know you're on cloud nine you're like i've just won yeah, yeah, what yeah. we've been doing two yeah, months yeah, yeah. i'm then in a hotel room completely alone i remember i think i figured out how to find laura and we were just like huddled together we were told when our flights were Laura. i think my flight was six hours after winning so literally and you don't know any of this you have no idea mm -hmm. what's going to happen so suddenly i'm in a hotel room like on my own i've got a flight in six hours i get on this flight and I'm you can't tell anybody and, and that's it and you can't tell anyone you can't you want. tell anyone and then you're nope. just back in the uk and i've got to say like it's I, very I, anticlimactic you get thrown up and then it's just like douche drop it is back like, into your life now it is the weirdest feeling and i'm suddenly home and i and i don't know what to do i've just been with people solidly for two months. No one, you do not have a moment. You are escorted to the toilet. You know, I didn't know what to do. For like three months, I just stayed home, like just purely confused. And, yeah. and, I, and I thought there'd be a lot more, maybe aftercare, and you, should, and you don't. And you guys, I would have yeah. guessed, well, you'd left, Nothing. but they'd start on the next season. You know, I, I don't think, I think they want you to do, this is really bad, I don't know if I should say this, but like, I, they want you to do well after, because I think they just want, the title to stay current. Of course. But how do they expect you to do well without some kind of guidance and support? Like I know from my experiences on BNTM and ANTM that I didn't receive any kind of formal aftercare. Um, just a follow up email really would have been appreciated. But I did assume that the winner did get this. And I'm not talking about hand holding you through your career, but just a follow up really would have been great. I met this awesome girl from Love Island recently and she was saying, oh, that, oh Lord. She was saying that she gets um, weekly therapy sessions provided by the show. Um, she wasn't even on it that long. I wonder if the later seasons of ANTM this was sorted out because at the end of the day, the industry by that point was fully aware that this is something that was highly needed in reality TV. What price did I get? Yeah, so so the money the money did come I think come through and I moved to America, so obviously that's all very expensive. I had to get a visa, so it took ages to get a visa. Um I think I had a contract with Forever Twenty One. I don't know if you guys remember the prizes. I don't mm -hmm. think I got that. I never got the Forever Twenty One thing. I was meant to be a Which you would have been perfect for. Which would have been I think or maybe I did like one thing with I can't remember, but I basically oh I, I went to Coachella and hosted one thing for them, but I'm sure I was meant to do a campaign and stuff and, I, and it didn't mm. happen. I then, I was meant to host for Extra and they only gave me one of those segments. And like, I had agents at the time. So I was like chasing these prizes because I really wanted mm -hmm. to do TV, presenting my parents, both work in television. Like I, I never really thought that I was like it's that. It's interesting that you say chasing because that's what, that's what a lot of girls have experienced. What happened really? with the fragrance, the fragrance? I don't know. Did that ever come out? <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the fragrance didn't. Um, and I'm trying to think what the other. So it's the Vogue Italia came out. We'd already shot that. Mm -hmm. um, oh, um, I was staying. I was living in London, and the guy, the music video guy, I don't know if you remember, who was with Lisa. He flew to my house. 
for 24 hours to write the song which we wrote together and I was like you, I don't know if you ever heard my song it's like we're aiming for you <laughs> so yeah. I begged producers to let me not release the song because I was like this is ridiculous I'm not a singer like I really can't sing. I can't dance like what on earth am I doing they were like you yeah. have to I wrote this song we sent it back and it's like eight hours behind is LA time so we're waiting we get notes back you need to say smize pot lead them Mm -hmm. Lucy, and where do you think that? And where do you think that came from? And, and I was like, Smize, oh, pot, lead, and booty, chooch. I quite like this song, oh. and I remember just saying to this guy, I was like, I'm living in a Malik house. Like, what's going on? And so I think we we incorporated it, and, and and I get what she was doing. She was she was pushing the brand. She's so clever at what she does. I think she'd got to a place in our cycle that everyone had just lost it. Like, it, you know what I mean? It was all just so. They were so drinking like, I, a serious Kool Aid. It was, yeah, so we, so yeah. I did release the song, but at the beginning, it's really odd. To be fair, the main producer, to be fair to him, was really kind to me and got me auditions after. Oh, he that's nice to hear a positive story. He actually sent me for a story. CW network, and he was like, you should do acting, which weirdly, I've started doing classes now. I, Mr. J, I can't tell you, I was so broken. My confidence took years, mm. and I don't think it was necessarily... It wasn't like the show or anything. It was, it was the fact that, you know, you're up here, but then you're in the real world. And like, it wasn't reality TV when I did it, wasn't really accepted. Instagram wasn't a thing. It was just mm. happening. So mm. like people, the agencies didn't quite know what to do with us. It was just a weird time. Mm. Do you know mm. what I mean? So like, and also by the way, sorry, this is coming across like, it was so much fun and I don't mean that all my confidence was shot because of the show. I just mean I'm a very delicate person. So I think- But no, I think, I, think, I think a lot of the girls have said that. And I think it's, it's a journey and you got to learn from it. I'm hoping that ultimately it has given you like this strength that I know you have today. I mean, you've got like this amazing confidence, the way you're out there working, the way you represent yourself now. Um, but, it, you know, with all of us, you know, things that don't break you make you stronger. It's true. And ultimately. it's sounding, I had such a blast filming it. So this is all sounding, I think it was more like afterwards going into the, I, I don't know. I, I also, I had my own personal problems. Like, so this really isn't at the show. Because when I watched the show back last night, I was like, my God, this was so much fun. Like, I'm so lucky. This was a blast. Like, what you've described accurately describes the insanity you know, kind of behind the scenes and that energy, which which affected everyone and a lot of producers uh, as well. Um, and I know them, a lot of them have gone to therapy. Like I said, after cycle 18, a lot of people left this show from behind the scenes. They were done. <laughs> and you know, and it's interesting. So, pe and some people have said, well, why am, why am I doing the Jay Shets now? Why am I talking about it now? Well, actually I can talk about it now. Yeah, lots of you have commented on my previous Jay's Chats recaps, basically asking the same question, wondering why now. Um, I don't think it's anything shady on Jay's part. I mean, he's obviously got a book to promote, which only makes sense. And I'm sure that he would have had non-disclosures in his contract that he wasn't allowed to speak negatively about ANTM. However, would a non-disclosure agreement last nine years? Because it's nine years since the show. And let's say it was five years. Would he really wait this long, even if he did have his book in the pipeline? I mean, I should go check my own non-disclosure because I'm out here chatty chatty. I'm probably breaching it too. Also, QHM23252 commented on one of my videos and made a very valid point as to why this Jay's chat has been so much juicier than the others. It's because his book was out by this point, which means that Tyra's people would have seen it already. And that's if they weren't privy to it before its release. Because let's face it, Tyra knows some people and those people know some people who know some people in publishing who know Jay's people. And then all of a sudden you've got the unpublished manuscript on your desk. Yes, Devil Wears Prada. Anyway, Jay probably didn't give two flying hoots about offending Tyra in this chat because it was already out in his book. He is so loose-lipped and I am so here for it. Everybody should have an opportunity to share their truth. Uh, again, my novel is only inspired by this world. It is a world, my book is a world of fiction, but it, it is rooted in some kind of my own truths and, a, and to give a sense of authenticity because what I was saying earlier on 
is the show started to go down when, when the audience started to see through it. And yeah. if you're, you know, if it's no confused. longer- They didn't know whether we were meant to be a reality show. I think the Kardashians were coming up. Oh my God, we did the photo shoot with the Kardashians, where I have to yes. say they were- With Chris used. Jenner. And with Chris Jenner, you know, Kim, who was yes. amazing. And, and like Kendall stunning. And, Kylie, yeah. and then later Kendall on, I actually went to the Philippines with Kylie before she like, you know, looked <laughs> new. Like, <but> look, <laughs> looked like, like Kim. Uh, just looked yes. like Kim and she was, um, she was an interesting character. Um, but yeah, we, like, we, we did meet these amazing, what was, oh, the focus group, somebody was gonna say. So the focus group, I remember this really well. We, we all went on, Kyle like messed up, people messed up. Now the focus group was very white and it was. Mm -hmm. And I didn't yeah. really realize this like at the time, privilege, like, you know what I mean? Like I have a lot of empathy for everyone, but I don't think I realized. So afterwards, like Alicia and, uh, you know, and I think maybe Ebony and Smur, who they, they were very vocal about like, this feels like a direct attack. And one of the focus groups said about Alicia in on, you know, and they played it, which was, mm -hmm. we don't like her African her accent. Her African accent, which, which, is, is like, which was a snapshot. Those were, that was a real focus group. That was, uh, that, was those were not act, Those were not actors. And I understand in theory what that would do to ultimately try and help the girls, but it also was an interesting portrait of America and kind of how they looked and viewed, you know, people of color. You know, um, I know even even in myself, uh, and, and I was already on TV, and I was up for another job, and I remember my agent coming back to me, and they're like, oh, you know, he's too E, because I was on E for several years. I was like, well, what does that mean? And then finally came back with, well, we're not looking for a person of color right now. You know, it's just like, that's how the industry is, um, you know, unfortunately. Good on Sophie for acknowledging that she didn't quite get it at the time. Obviously, she knew it was rude, but it can be quite difficult to see the bigger picture, especially when you're white. Now, I always had a feeling that this focus group were actors, but to have it confirmed that they weren't is just as shocking. Let me explain. If they were actors, it means that production wanted this to happen, they wanted that reaction. And if they weren't, it's just as bad, really, because it means that they stood back and let it happen. And as Jay said, this was like a screenshot of what America stood for, which is terrifying. Like, can you even have a focus group with all white people? Like, what kind of representation of society is that? Uh, but it, but they, didn't, they didn't play that much of it because Alicia was really upset and like Miss J was really, was really incredible in that time. Yeah, Miss J was incredible in that moment. Yeah, he was, was just like, girl, you got to get it together. This is what the world is. You got to. Yes. And, and it mm -hmm. was true. And I think, and that rattled those girls for a while. Yeah, That really yeah, did no. rattle everyone. Of course it did. But they liked Kyle because she was very girl next door and white. And I think that's where this, and Kyle was kind of like, oh, shut up guys, like get your stuff to, you know, like, I can't have said that, like, forgive me. But I think mm. she was a bit like, you know, oh, and, and that caused more friction. I think in the house, that's where that mm -hmm. all started to, to you know. Mm -hmm. Sophie hit the nail right on the head with this one. This is totally the point when the tension started to build and brew between Kyle and the rest of the girls. I think Kyle took it as though we were angry at her, but it wasn't personal and that was not the case. We were angry at the situation. Kyle just happened to be the personified example of why we were so frustrated. But again, I really don't think she saw it that way. But maybe just like Sophie, she didn't see the bigger picture at the time. This has felt like the best catch up because, first of all, it felt like five minutes. <laughs> and it's like, I'm just hanging with an old friend. And like I said, this cast of girls, I loved hanging with you guys. So much shooting that last cycle with me. Um, it, it, so you guys were the silver lining of the show for me on this last cycle. So thank yeah. you so much. But thank you, thank you also for being so honest, so honest and kind and, and, and real in that experience. I had no idea what you were going through and you were a rock to us. So that's really commendable because I couldn't imagine, we were going through physical torture. I couldn't imagine mm. as an adult knowing, you know, being the strong person you, I just, I couldn't imagine what that was like. Yeah. Thank you, Sophie. Thank, Thank you guys so, so, so much. We'll see you all real, real, real soon with the fans, Jay's chat. Did the she just Wakanda? Yes, Sophie, Wakanda forever.
Seriously, this whole Jay's chat was a full-on ANTM revelation. I actually feel like I need a nap for like a whole damn week. I am so proud of Sophie. I actually think she was one of the best guests on Jay's chat. Uh, she was super engaging. I liked how she was asking questions. She kind of, you know, took charge of the interview. Um, she did lose her trailer thought a little bit, but that's totally understandable because there was a lot to get through. I just found it super entertaining. As I said before, I'm gonna take a teeny weeny break from ANTM content, but I have got plenty for you to binge watch in the meantime um coming up next i'm definitely going to do some fashion videos a lot of you have asked for autumn trends i could so do that um i might do some model content some skincare some working out yeah i am just gonna go where the wind takes me so please do hit the bell notification so you don't miss out subscribe to my channel and follow me on instagram but yeah Thank you so much for watching my recap of Jay's chat on ANTM Cycle 18 with my girl Sophie Sumner. I'll be back after my week-long nap.